I think it's great. It's, uh, I'm really looking forward to trying it within the container uh, to see how it cools the gases uh, uh, to get a more realistic feel for uh, the, the technique. My search would have taken me wherever it is that I could have found the information and, uh, and really this was, this was the place where uh, the, the leading edge was. In the middle of October 2009, experienced fire chiefs from six countries and three continents came together at Sandu College of Fire and Rescue to exchange knowledge and learn more about the Swedish model of offensive interior firefighting. Part of the purpose for the conference at Sandu was to honor some of the early pioneers of the Swedish model, Christo Gisesson and Mats Rosander. They're recognized throughout the world as the leaders in this type of firefighting and they're the first ones that really were able to understand fire behavior and fire development in a compartment and the techniques that they have perfected and been using for so long are of great interest to firefighters all around the world. I think he, he um, saved so many lives in, in, in firefighter lives in the world because of his research. It's very important in the history of firefighting, this, this uh, research. For the first time in many years, Mats Rosander gave a lecture at the Sandu College, and this time to a professional group of international fire chiefs. Since Christo Gisesson's tragic death in 2008, Mats Rosander is the remaining link to the origins of this knowledge, and therefore his presence at the conference was highly appreciated. For me it was like, um, what shall I say, if when I am 14 years old and I have a star, you know, <laughs> then, and I have the chance to meet the star, so this is the feeling. The Institution of Fire Engineers wishes to officially commend you and thank you for your outstanding contribution to the science of fire extinction across the international community. This is signed by our international president. Uh, he was the chief officer of Toronto Fire Department at the moment. So, Matt, I'd like you to come forward, please, and accept this token of our appreciation. No, thank you. Unfortunately, Krista is not here with us today, but I was fortunate to meet the gentleman in 1997, and he made an incredible impact on me as a very special man. And, I, and I've heard these pioneers speak of Krista, and I can see the admiration and respect that they have for this man. Um, could you accept this, please, um, and, and pass it on to Krista's family? Cross that way. The order. For Mats Rosander, it was a moving moment to see that so many around the world had adapted his and Christo Gisesson's ideas and put them into practice in their own countries. And suddenly it's uh, adopted all over the world. I didn't, ex I didn't expect that in my wild wildest dreams. And um, many times I doubted really that we were doing the right things. Uh, but uh, today I got the receipt that, all right, we, maybe we were a bit early, but we were doing the right things. Christo Gisesson and Mats Rosander's research goes back to the early 70s. They proved, both in theory and practice, that smoke or fire gases are ignitable and play a major role in fire behavior. We've been fighting fires for so long and yet we didn't really understand fire. And so these guys have gone back to the basics and uh, there was a big gap there and they filled that gap. And once you fill that gap in the basics, that allows you the opportunity to, to improve every aspect of your operations right up to the strategic level. Most of the chiefs that came to Sanda this fall use and teach some of these techniques in their countries already. However, to come and practice and exchange experiences in Sweden, where it all began, was of great value to many of them. Peter McBride from Ottawa, Canada, had not used these methods before, but had heard of them and wanted to find out more. I think it's excellent. Uh, I think that um, uh, I'm really inefficient. Uh, I'd need lots of training. And I think that's what they do here, is they uh, prepare people to handle this type of firefighting. 
and I completely see the value of it and uh, I would like to see it introduced as a set of tactics uh, within my own department. Before Christo Gieselson and Mats Rosander, fire behavior was not properly understood and the methods and tools they developed have revolutionized the way fires are fought in Sweden. What I liked about the, the Swedish system was that the firefighters were now in control and um, when we started training back in my own brigade in Australia, the first thing that many firefighters would say was, you know, even very experienced firefighters, was that for the first time in their career they felt that they were in control because they understood what was happening around them. It's made the job of firefighting far safer, uh, in my opinion, and I think in everybody's opinion in the UK. We are now proactive with fire rather than reacting to what fire does. However, the ignitability of smoke is still not well known in many countries outside of Sweden. To this day, firefighters around the world are injured and killed in flashovers, backdrafts and fire gas explosions due to not fully understanding these basic facts about fire behavior. For example, in 2007, we lost 18 people uh, in, in the United States, 18 firefighters in the United States because of fire behavior related events. Um, and unfortunately, um, it, it's taking quite a bit of effort to get people to recognize that there, is, there, is a, there, there are answers, not just one, but, but several answers to this particular problem, that these fatalities are entirely preventable. 